Hello and welcome to Talkernet History, the podcast where we, Matt, and Max talk about works of alternate history, alternate history scenarios, and history in general. This episode, it's not just going to be Talkernet history, it's going to be Falkernet history. <laughs> We're going to talk about the Falkland Islands. Uh, I guess more specifically, the war for the Falkland Islands fought back in 1982. Yes. Be- between Great Britain and Argentina. Yes, this is an interesting one. We thought of it recently, and there's a lot of potentials here, actually. There's more interesting stuff to work with than you'd think. Yeah, because the Falkland Islands War is something I knew almost nothing about. So it, it, it's always fun to get into some kind of historical subject you know nothing about, because everything is surprising. Everything has some interesting aspect to it. Like, the first time I'd ever heard of the Falkland Islands War, or the Falkland Islands in general, was from an episode of The Simpsons. Really? There was, like, this joke where Krusty came to Bart's birthday party or something, and Bart was like, Krusty, don't, isn't your show on right now? And he said, ah... It's a tape segment. The kids will never know the difference. And then you see Krusty juggling. Then he says, children, I've just heard word that the Falkland Islands have just been invaded. And then he pulls on a map and starts talking. About <laughs> They'll never notice. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh. Um, the history of the Falkland Islands, I knew very little about. Yeah, it was yeah. kind of this almost no man's land. It traded hands a couple times between... I guess the the Spanish and then the British, the French. Yeah, yeah. It's so it's this island off the coast of Argentina. It's actually an archipelago. It's a bunch of different islands, mm-hmm. and the geography of it is pretty plain. A lot of hills, low hills, almost no trees anywhere. Just like a couple of bushes. No real natural resources. Pretty much its only industry is sheep, wool from sheep, and that's kind of it. Yeah. And providing a coaling station for the British Navy. That was a big deal for yeah, it. That yeah, that's like the whole reason for it. And it's kind of near the southern tip of South America, so that's a strategic point to hold before the Panama Canal was made. Very important base. But I think the most interesting thing we should mention about that is that apparently at one point it was kind of a... Were there ship raiders or pirates or something were based out of there? Mm. And like the U.S. Navy came in and... <laughs> and kind of kicked them out. Well, well, the, or maybe uh, I'm... the U.S. Navy w- were kind of pirates at one point in the Falkland Islands. Like to explain that, there were some American sailors who were civilians that were operating out of the Falkland Islands, hunting seals. They were poaching seals, basically. At the time, it was I think technically owned by the Republic of the River Platte or whatever the heck it was called, like the successor to you know Spanish. Uh, that little yeah. part of South mm-hmm. America. And the the government came in and said, you can't do this anymore, arrested them, impounded their goods, and the U.S. Navy showed up and said, you can't arrest Americans! <laughs> <laughs> like, destroyed the settlement, basically, and forced everyone to leave. Wow. And then as they were leaving, they declared the area to be owned by no nation. This is like no man's land now. <laughs> and then just left. <laughs> Interesting. So for a period of time after it, it was not controlled by anyone. Mm-hmm. Um, Eventually the British take it and they've held, they've held on to it since, except for a brief interlude in 1982, which we'll be talking about. A quite brief interlude. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Falkland Islands wasn't part of Britain proper. Uh, residents of the island were not British citizens. They were subjects, kind of like... Well, they uh, are, everyone's a subject there, I thought. They're not... Well, they're citizens now. Okay. Now they're citizens. But, they, well, it's kind of weird because they're citizens of Great Britain, but they, for instance, couldn't vote on Brexit. Uh, hmm. the, so I don't really understand how that works exactly. But, I don't know. But they are full citizens, or at least second-class citizens <laughs> now. <laughs> um, so the the war itself, though, I think mm-hmm. probably jumping to what's really on, really on point is that basically Argentina has made claims for a while to... The Falklands, which they call the Malvinas. Yes, the Malvinas, yeah. It was like a, a big point of national pride being being besmirched was the fact that this foreign power was holding on to these islands off their coast that they at one point historically owned. Like in, in schools, in primary schools, they would <laughs> like kids every day would say, and also the Malvinas are Argentinian and stuff like that. <laughs> like it's this big national point of anger for them back then and even still to this day oh yes but long story short is that eventually the 
Argentina invades and takes the islands. And it's interesting how it kind of starts uh, this whole thing because it's sort of an accident. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, well, maybe it was an accident and maybe it was intentional. But um, to give some background, back in uh, the late 1970s, the government of Argentina was overturned in a coup and taken over by a military junta. Mm -hmm. So these generals and stuff took over the country and popular support was diminishing. The economy was doing poorly. And in order to find something to gin up, you know, national popular sentiment, this whole putting pressure on Britain to give back the Falkland Islands was a was a uh, strategy of theirs. And for a long time, they were trying to go about it in a diplomatic way. And eventually, they got frustrated and decided, okay, we're going to do a military seizure of the island. But as they were like gearing up for this war, when they were in the first steps of preparing for it, suddenly, <laughs> just out of nowhere, this group of metal reclaimers got contracted to go to South Georgia Island and scraps this old Antarctic research station that was abandoned. Mm -hmm. And when they showed up, they just decided apropos to claim it for Argentina. Huh. <laughs> they like ran up the Argentinian flag and said, this is Argentinian soil. That's some brave metal scrappers right there. <laughs> and the uh, Argentinian government decided to back their play and send Marines to defend the island, to defend this holy Argentinian soil. <laughs> And like South Georgia Island is just a spit of land. It is tiny. It's so tiny. Yeah. Um, actually, even before that, they had taken this island called Southern Thule back in 1977, <laughs> which mm -hmm. is way smaller and way more remote than even South Georgia Island. <sighs> they like took it back in 1977. I don't think they ever had a permanent garrison, but they ran up a flag there in Britain, thought about escalating things, but then didn't end up doing mm -hmm. so um, which kind of made argentina more bold about just taking las malvinas mm -hmm. interesting so because these scrappers if they invade the falkland mm -hmm. islands and they take it in sort of a bloodless maneuver mm -hmm. and then britain decides mm, to respond <laughs> in kind by sending a task force all the way from britain it's like one of the longest a task force has ever traveled from britain to the falklands to reclaim them yeah 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 they had a aircraft carrier they had a couple destroyers, and this is kind of funny. They they used the ocean liner Queen Elizabeth II as a troop ship. Really? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> did they requisition it? I, I don't know exactly how this happened. I think they did. I, I'm not sure. Um, maybe it was voluntary. Uh, Harriers, lots of Harriers. That's right. Yeah. Vertical takeoff, VTOL. Yeah. Was that new at the time? Was that a... Not VTOL, because VTOL's been around since the 60s, but I mean the Harrier. The Harrier was the first main real jet to use it, so the Brits did use it there. Mm -hmm. Also to be seen in the movie True Lies. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, right. Yes. <laughs> it's a British plane, so why... why the Americans it? used it. The Marines... Yeah, the Marines have used Harriers, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yes, and Arnold Schwarzenegger used it as well. He did, yeah. yeah. To fire that man. You're fired. <laughs> fired. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> what a film. Yeah, it is a good film. I like it, actually. Yeah. So they launch this task force, and they they launch an invasion of the island by, primarily, I think, by helicopter and by actual amphibious landing. Yeah, at San Carlos mm -hmm. was the landing site, yeah. And the Argentinians don't really fight back that i mean there is fighting there, there is fighting there's definitely fighting yeah but goose green that's that's really where most of it is the big the big battle i think it was second para or second third para. para yeah colonel is it h jones yeah that was his nickname h i think yeah. he died in he was battle. killed yeah he won the victoria cross though that is very prestigious yes. it's very hard to get yeah harder than the medal of honor apparently yeah yeah um yeah uh the the argentinians did not do very much counterattacking. like when the british actually sent their task force morale went really really low because they kind of thought this was going to be just this seizure they would hold on to it and the whole international community would have to deal with it well yeah they figured i think that the argentinian government figures that britain would be like whoa whoa whoa, you can't do that and then there would be talks and that mm. they figure that they would probably have to settle they'd have to pay the british money and they would retain the islands or something or basically sort of like a is it fate accompli or whatever? Is it sort of like, well, we've done it. 
So what are you going to do about it? And then Britain called their bluff. The <laughs> Iron Lady called their bluff. It's like, we're invading. <laughs> Rolling the iron dice, as Bismarck used to call it. Yeah. Well, the thing is, too, is it probably shocked a lot of people. Britain had a large larger military but it didn't have a gigantic military and the idea that they were going to send a freaking task force all the way to (laughs) in the Falklands is remote yeah I mean this is probably a good place to put a map up but (laughs) look at I mean it is remote it is most of the population of Argentina lives like near Buenos Aires which is very far away from this I mean the Falklands is opposite Patagonia and there's like nothing there really also keep in mind when you're looking at a world map Things near the poles are blown up in size mm-hmm. because of just the way a sphere works mm-hmm. on a flat yeah, yeah. thing. That Greenland is not actually that big. No, Greenland's not the size of Africa. Like it looks like it's the size on a Mercator projection, but it's not. Yeah. So distances are kind of wonky. As, oh, as a globe a is a better way, guys. That's the most accurate rendering. Right. Right. So just we should we should watch movies on globes. Actually, just project it around. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, the thing is, it's interesting. Neil deGrasse Tyson said this about. You know, those globes that have like rough patches for the mountains. It's like mm-hmm. the earth, if you could reach out and touch it from space, you know, like a giant, celestial giant touching it from space, it would feel smoother than a cue ball. Because huh. if you think about it, you made the point like the distance between the tallest point on earth and the deepest point on earth. So what it's about like six miles up to the top of Everest. It's about six or seven miles down to the Marianas Trench. So it's like 12 or 13 miles. Mm-hmm. But the earth is like how many 24,000 <laughs> miles around. So like it's, it's like nothing. I mean, to get to the top of if you could drive up Everest straight up with a take a car up the distance to Everest, it'd be it's hmm. six miles. You could cover it in like no time. I mean, so. that's hysterical. Yeah. Huh. I hadn't thought about that. This is kind of a crazy tangent but i was talking about watching a movie on a sphere have mm-hmm. you ever heard of something called smile box no a couple of movies back in the 1960s there was this gimmick where instead of watching it on a flat screen you'd watch it on a dome kind of like a planetarium was, there was a there was a oh, what is that movie like once upon a time in the west or something like that close it's how the west was won. how the west was won yeah, yes. yeah that that, I think, is supposed to be shot on that. It, it's really funny because there's there's really two ways you can watch it nowadays. You can either watch it in rectangular, like normal form, which looks okay most of the time. But when s- people are like walking around the edges, it gets really weird and warped. <laughs> <laughs> or you can watch it in this aspect ratio called Smile Box, which is this bizarre, like the, 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 the screen is really thin in the middle and it gets super wide at the edges because it's like a panoramic view. Because it's trying to, you know, this is what you'd see on the dome, basically. And it's it's the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. It looks so strange. What? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Um, oh. It's on the Blu-ray version, I think. I think um, a couple other movies were filmed in this crazy aspect ratio, but I don't really... What? Yeah. Strange. We learn a new thing every day. <laughs> so. But back to the Falklands. So yeah, ultimately, the Falklands. there was some action on the... Uh, it was actually more famous, I guess, probably for action on the ocean... The British, they used a nuclear submarine, sank uh, an, Aust- an Argent- Austrian, an Argentine, <laughs> an Argentinian cruiser. This Austrian ship has entered the total exclusion zone. <laughs> Must sink it. Yeah. The Belgrano. The, the General, Belgrano. Yeah. The General Belgrano. General Belgrano, which was actually a, a U.S. cruiser from the 40s. Yeah. The Argentinians actually posed a threat to the British because they had what are called exocent missiles, which are mm-hmm. anti-ship missiles. Yeah. And they actually sank a couple of British ships and damaged some others. And Yeah. They, they um, sank Sheffield. Mm-hmm. and a couple others. I can't remember the mm-hmm. names. And damaged some, I think. Yeah, and, yeah. They I mean, destroyed was... two destroyers. They destroyed a cargo ship, a couple of frigates. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it was actually not without cost to the British, but ultimately oh, yeah. the British defeated the Argentinians, recover Falkland Islands, and to this day, they still a dispute over who owns it. But yeah, yeah. no one's really you know clamoring for it to be returned to Argentina, I guess, at this point. That's kind of the problem, is that when you resort to force, it really, really hurts your argument in the international community. Because mm-hmm. like at the time, before the invasion, I think a lot of the world kind of felt that, uh, you know... Great What's this weird yeah. leftover of the, the British Empire? Because it's a colonial war. It's a war to 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 keep your colony. <laughs> That's right. But the weird thing about it is that it's one of the few cases in like the decolonization era where the colony really wanted to stay part yeah. <laughs> of of the uh, the home country. Yeah, because the people who live on the Falklands aren't native. They're not like Argentinians. They're 
British people, I think. Yeah, if I recall, ethnically they're like Anglo's and Welsh people and yeah, stuff like that. Of... Yeah, I mean there is a little bit of cultural crossover. They use some Spanish words for certain things, like especially in terms of like sheep herding and horses and stuff. Hmm. But it's 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 pretty mm -hmm. European for the most part. There's actually a colony of Welsh people in Patagonia. Really? Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. You know, that's the thing is that Argentina has a lot of European immigrants. In Italians, it. like the Pope, who's from Argentina, is <laughs> descended from Italian immigrants. <laughs> you know, kind of uh, uh, vaguely related just in terms of like South American immigrants. But did you know that a lot of Confederate Americans left the United States and went to Brazil? Yes. <laughs> Jimmy Carter visited one of their settlements. There's really? like a big obelisk with a Confederate flag on it. <laughs> Hmm. Like Jimmy Carter is like shaking hands with some guy. Everyone seems to go to South America after wars. <laughs> it's like the Drakas, basically. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Which Panzer Grenadier Division was your abuelo in? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Um, <laughs> and, you know, if you, if you look at... I'm pretty sure it's Chile's armed forces, or maybe it's Uruguay. I can't remember. But they use, like, coal scuttle helmets. <laughs> Max. We use coal scuttle oh, helmets. <laughs> yeah, but I mean... <laughs> Have you seen the Pazgat or whatever it's called? Or whatever they... There's a different one now. It looks... It's a modified version of that. Everyone uses it now. I mean, look, it's a great helmet. It's really good. Yeah, because it's better at protecting you. Yeah. I like Adrian helmets. That's what we should use. Oh, the British... The tin... Is that the tin can? The, what the British soldiers wore? No, that's the... Um, that's the... That's the... It. Oh, God. The Adrian was that the, the French War in World yeah. War One? Yeah, with that weird crest on it's like top. The Roman centurion yeah. crest. It's like a fireman's helmet or something. Yeah, you know? the British. What did the Tommy? You know, the Tommy had. Yeah, what do you call that? I I used to know that off the top of my head. Yeah. That's a good. I like that helmet. Yeah, I like how they still used it until 1945, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then the good old classic American helmet that we used yeah. through, through Vietnam into the 70s or 80s. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, when it comes to headgear, red berets, I think, are the safest. And, that's right. Yeah, that's... They protect your head the best. Yeah, yeah. That and... and black uh, berets. Black berets. Proud Poland. <laughs> Volska. Volska. <laughs> uh, garrison caps, those are always good. Makes you look like a Boy Scout Kepis. We need those. Yeah, kepis. <laughs> we need kepis. More kepis. Well, you can hide cans of spam under your hat <laughs> if you need to, you know? Um... <laughs> the gendarme. <laughs> there's a there's a funny uh, Bill Malden comic. There's a very angry looking man in a very very fancy uniform covered in medals, and he's wearing a sash, I think too. And there's an American soldier holding him hostage, and there's an officer who's looking very angry at the American soldier, and he's saying, "You didn't capture a general. You captured the chief of police." <laughs> 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 just like the European ornamentation. Yeah, you know. that's true. I mean, that's how you tell, like, you could tell a communist country is everyone had tons of medals. Look at a North Korean, like, <laughs> general procession. Like, you'll see them, and they're just covered in them. Sort of like, was it Mikhail Kalashnikov said about how he met uh, Eugene Stoner, the inventor of the M16, mm. and he apparently said to him, like, I wish I was in your position because all they gave me is they gave me medal after medal, but, like, I made no money. You know, in a <laughs> capitalist country, you can make money, but they just give me how many orders of Lenin can you have after? After about four, don't they all just kind of start blending together? <laughs> I drive a Yugo, basically. You yeah. Know. yeah. <laughs> the Yugo. I wonder if any of those are still around. Original Yugos? I'm mm -hmm. sure there's people who restore them and whatnot. AMC there's... Gremlins. And people still have those. Yeah, yeah. There's um... Datsuns. I've seen a Datsun on the road, which I thought was really funny. It's like, a Datsun? <laughs> oh, come on. There's a film from several years ago. It's got Danny DeVito in it and uh, Casey Affleck and a bunch of other people. It's called Drowning Mona. And kind of the joke of the movie is it's set in this crappy town and everyone drives a Yugo from the cops. to <laughs> Like there's what? cop cars that are Yugos. Yeah, oh, my God. It's just a, a kind of a sight gag. <laughs> I think Bette Midler's in the movie, too. Jeez. It's, it's, I watched it a bunch when I was a kid, but I don't think it's like a very good movie. But that's a funny little aspect of it. It's Yugos. My goodness. Mm -hmm. well, so as we've talked about the Falklands War, let's get to the meat of this, Max. Let's talk about some alternate Falklands Wars. And yes. let's start out with, I can't think of any Falklands War alternate histories. Can you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think any exist. Ap apart from like forum posts by people on the internet. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's mm -hmm. any published yeah. or um, visual 
stuff. Maybe there's an Argentinian, you know, Spanish language <laughs> alternate history community, but yeah. not in English, I don't think. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But it actually could affect some things in kind mm-hmm. of a, an interesting way. So, so that's something about this war that I found so fascinating is how close run it was in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. I mean, with the Exocet missile, it's so such a powerful weapon if used effectively. Yeah, and um, they just didn't use it right. Well, I mean, they used yeah. they used it. They they sunk some pretty important ships. Like for instance, that cargo ship that I mentioned, it had all their Chinook helicopters on it, mm-hmm. and that was supposed to be the way they were going to get around. Oh, I'm sorry, all but one of them. Uh, one they did have one Chinook helicopter, but it was the way they were supposed to get around the island to like transport people because there's no roads <laughs> yeah it's like this abandoned like wilderness yeah um so it's really hard to get around so that really affected them but um yeah they it, they could have used exosets a lot better and if they had sunk that carrier that carrier that, that's it uh, yeah it's over because there's no freaking air base that you could have fly from <laughs> well they do have ascension island <laughs> but that's kind of a long way well, yeah did you know that they actually ran Air raids out of Ascension Islands. Really? With the, what? The Black Buck raids. I don't know exactly what they used, but they did lots of air-to-air refueling. I think it is the longest bombing run ever, even longer than the Barksdale to Iraq one. Really? Yeah. That one's got to be longer, I feel like. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's the same thing with the whole map thing, it, 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 the warping of it, kind of. Because Ascension Island is really far away. It's far away from everything. From everything. <laughs> Send Napoleon there. Yeah. yeah. Attack run from St. Helena. <laughs> but um, Short aside, St. Helena right now has the oldest living creature that we know of. Mm, it's a tortoise there. Really? It's, a, it's a, like a, I think it's a Galapagos or some sort of giant tortoise mm. that is like from like 1830s. Huh. Yeah. It lives there. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. That's amazing. That? <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Well, uh, sorry. Short deviation. But yes, let's talk yeah. about some alternate history scenarios. And there's a couple ways you can approach it. Either you can approach it with changes pre Falkland War changes mm-hmm. to, you know, the Falklands themselves and how that affects stuff, or changes to the conduct in the war mm-hmm. itself. Yeah. Well, first I had the idea about the reverse Falkland Wars. That would make a good story. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Argentina. <laughs> The, the the General Belgrano marching down the Thames. <laughs> that one's too ridiculous. That's sort of like... <laughs> <laughs> this ancient claim, <laughs> you know, uh, going back to like Bloody Mary or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Argentina takes Northern Ireland. <laughs> Argentina um, takes the Isle of Man. Oh, that's right. Yes, that would be the good... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this island is ours. <laughs> Britain has taken the Isle of Man. Argentina has to reclaim it. <laughs> Guernsey is rightful Argentinian clay. <laughs> so, but let's conduct during the war itself. So if they'd spent more time preparing, if, if it is true that the landing rate of those metal scrappers was just happened to be an accident. Yeah. And they were just overcome with patriotism and that's why they did it. <laughs> there, the, there's like a conspiracy theory that it was some member of the junta set that up to like that's believable yeah push because it seems pretty crazy that people be like oh we're here to collect some scrap metal you know what we should also do declare this island to belong to our country (laughs) (laughs) well you know when the fervor gets high enough all kinds Mm -hmm. of crazy stuff can happen there was something uh uh similar that happened in the senkaku islands uh several years ago a bunch of chinese people showed up and claimed it for china and you know, it, the situation was diffused. Do you remember that island dispute between oh, China? Oh, so yeah, and, those volcanic islands or whatever. In Japan, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because after World War II, the United States gave them to Japan, and they were like, what? No, oh, this is this is Chinese soil. Just like Okinawa, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, or the Spratly Islands. The Spratlys. Isn't there a book about a SSN, war? SSN, yeah. <laughs> it's basically like Tom Clancy writing about this submarine that goes around sinking a whole bunch of giant Chinese ships and subs. So it's Team Yankee underwater. Yes, pretty much. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, that's, so, there's, that's enjoyable. But yeah, if Argentina waits, you know, six months or a year or whatever and really prepares, maybe stockpiles yeah. more excessence, you know, prepares their air forces in, in a better way, like... If they can, you know, sink a good chunk of the landing force, or especially the carrier, I mean, then everything else is sitting ducks. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a a lot of things they could have done better. Have more air-to-air refueling craft. I think they only had two 
for mm. their entire Air Force, and wow. they're flying, they're sorting, you know, a pretty long distance in some cases. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because there's that's not a lot on the land opposite of it. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. You kind of have to go right back. Mm-hmm. Um, they had a they had an aircraft carrier. I think it's the 24th of June or May or something. Mm-hmm. I think is the name of it, but in Spanish. Uh, let's see what's something else they could have done better. Buy more exosets. They were trying to buy exosets during the war, but Britain convinced the UN to put a arms embargo on them so they couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> but if they yeah, if they'd stockpiled more and used them, yeah. 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 The, or or, mm-hmm. or attack in mass with them. Mm-hmm. Because Yeah, because they sent them in small penny packets, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of interesting. The the British surface to air missiles were actually not that good. Yes, they were pretty bad. There's actually, some pretty great names too. Oh, <laughs> yes. I was reading Max Hastings' book, and it's so funny. He's talking about all these missiles, and um, I wrote them down. There's Sea Cat, Sea Dart, Sea Wolf, and Sea Slug. <laughs> <laughs> Strikes fear into the hearts of its enemies. <laughs> the mighty sea slug. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't want to eat a sea slug. I wouldn't want someone to throw one at me. <laughs> yeah, but it seems pretty... I mean, there wasn't anything better. <laughs> sea slug. Like sea slug. Well, that's British people for you. They, they come up with the most interesting names for things. The sea slug. The sea slug. The sea slug was actually totally obsolete by that point. It was like this 1950s era surface to air missile mm-hmm. that they actually use to just bombard things from super <laughs> long distance interesting um let's see sea cat the argentinians had sea cat also oh really they called it tiger cat though mm. Ooh. Mm. yeah a tiger tiger oh mm. maybe a tiger a tiger <laughs> a super tiger a super tiger a king tiger a king tiger <laughs> the argentinians <laughs> landing with tigers and king tigers <laughs> uh Let's see what else were some certain things they could do. They, they actually resisted the land, like resist the landings, like because I think a lot of the Argentinian troops who were there were like conscripts, you know, poorly trained, poorly equipped conscripts. Yeah. You know, if they actually had attacked the landing grounds or something like that, or mine the harbors or something. Yeah, they didn't mine them at all. Mm-hmm. It's like uh, they chose the landing site at San Carlos, and one of the planners was like, "Well, it's obviously mined," and it's like, "Well, why? Well, I would have mined it." So. Yeah, and then it wasn't. Um, Yeah, there's a lot of stuff after the landing they could have done. Like, they had all these ground attack aircraft, these coins is what they call them, counterinsurgency craft, Mm kind of like that uh, Super Tucano that we're using now. Oh, yeah, like those small, you know, they're really meant for ground attacks. Yeah, it's like these dual engine propeller planes. Mm -hmm. And they could have used them to great effect when the British were yomping across the island, but they didn't really use them Mm -hmm. ever because they feared the mighty blowpipe <laughs> the blowpipe missile system <laughs> striking fear into the hearts of argentinians everywhere <laughs> blowpipe was like a stinger missile if a stinger missile was terrible <laughs> didn't it like fail most of the time they used it yeah i think they used it 92 times and it only ever hit anything twice <laughs> it's, it's, it's like not good <laughs> the blowpipe missile because <laughs> it takes forever to, oh to lock on to stuff mm-hmm. and if it's coming straight at you it, it doesn't work very well hmm. like for, speaking of locking on that was the problem with sea cat and sea wolf and all that stuff was that if you have two sea planes slug. sea slug <laughs> <laughs> if you have two planes coming towards you and they're close together it like can't find a solution for one it just gets confused and just it it cannot lock <laughs> it's it's worthless at that point what yeah it was wow. like, terrible oh my goodness but yeah if the argentinians do that let's say they defeat the british invasion mm-hmm. do they retain the islands probably yeah probably i mean possession is nine tenths of the law it is so if you can't get them out possession <laughs> first possession <laughs> You have to you have to take it and know it's not yours. There is, and in open and notorious. Open and notorious. <laughs> so explain that a little bit. The whole adverse possession. Yeah. So the general concept is is that it's let's say there's a piece of property that's not yours. Mm-hmm. Let's say it's a lot and you don't own it. It's a piece of land with a house on it. Yeah. If you just move into it and live there for a period of time mandated by statute. And you are living there open and notoriously. So you're not like sneaking in. You live there like you're maintained <laughs> and you maintain the property like you're maintaining the lawn. And you most importantly, in most states, pay all the property taxes too um, on it. So you have to be like, hey, owner of the land, I'm here. I'm living here. 
don't care. And if the person never comes around and does anything about it after a certain period of time, depending on what state, there are seven years in some states. The I think most is 40 in a couple states, so basically impossible to do. Then you can at some point file an action and say, this is now my property. I've adversely possessed it. It, it is, I mean, it is basically legal thievery, but it almost never happens. And the only times it ever does really happen are like in these disputes over small chunks of land. Like there is a corner of land. There's like a copse of trees or whatever at the corner of my property. And I thought it was mine and I would put up a fence around it and did stuff with it. But then when you look at the plat map, it actually shows that Mm -hmm. it's your neighbor's property. There have been in some cases where courts have said that's okay. But people think adverse possession, like, oh, I'm just going to move into this house and then three weeks later it belongs to me. No, 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 no. There's very specific procedures to be followed for it. That's so funny that you have to pay property. Yeah, to pay, yeah, you can't you can't like sneak in there and be like, well, I'm living here at night, but no one knows I'm here. And I, you know. Uh, if I pay someone else's income taxes, can I have their job? <laughs> <laughs> I've now assumed your life. Your life belongs to me it's now. It's mine now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, no, no. But um, so if Argentina retains it, you know, I guess they'll come to a settlement and then the Malvinas will be reunited with their brothers. The the father, the fatherland. The father. Yeah. <laughs> so that would have some interesting implications mm-hmm. for Britain. Mm-hmm. It would hurt the conservatives quite badly. May hurt the Iron Lady herself. Yeah, definitely. Um, or, I mean, or you could go real bonkers and then launch like a nuclear strike or something like that in Argentina. <laughs> a state of war exists with Argentina yeah, for, yeah. for years. Yeah. Like a North and South Korea yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. They, uh, the British wage unrestricted submarine warfare. <laughs> the River Plate <laughs> is now the graveyard oh. of Argentinian ships. Oh, no. Launch airstrikes on the mainland, which I don't think the British ever did launch airstrikes on like the mainland of Argentina. You know, that's kind of the controversy over the General Belgrano is Mm -hmm. that it was outside of this thing called the total exclusion zone. It was this ring around the islands. So at first they said, this is a maritime exclusion zone. If if any Argentinian ships enter it, we're going to sink them. And then they said, it's a total exclusion zone. If anything Argentinian enters, we're going to destroy it. And then they issued this public statement saying, um, actually, this is a war where we can just do whatever we want. So So we're going to sink your ship. (laughs) So like what? Like why even make a zone? So people were kind of confused about that and they kind of still are to this day. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they sunk it outside of the zone. And very controversially, this ship was sailing away from it. So, you know, there's like kind of a controversy about that. Mm -hmm. The HMS Conqueror was the name of the submarine. (sighs) God, I love British ship names. Conqueror, yeah. A venomous. nuclear summer, submarine. Yes, venomous. <laughs> the HMS. What was it we found? Those British ships that were like named after French. The HMS Marshall. Nay. Marshall Nay. It's like what the, It's like they're stealing other people's histories to name their ships. <laughs> Marshall, a great Anglo Marshall. Nay. <laughs> the, the HMS Jukov. <laughs> the HMS Joseph Stalin. <laughs> He was a marshal, you know. He was, of course. Yes. Fire Marshal Bill. Uh, Marshal Mathers. The HMS James Carey. <laughs> General Carey, General if you will, Carey. from our prior episode. Yeah, oh, yes. Right. Yes. That <laughs> alternate general, Jim Carey. Uh, <laughs> that was a funny situation. Um, what else? Yeah, no. So, or there's, I guess, what if the British only take half of it back? There's, is there going to be like a Cold War division, you know? <laughs> Demilitarized zone. zone. you know. What if there's like an island in between and there's a territorial dispute and the second Falklands War happens over that? Or even more so, and this is just a um, kind of a, a spoiler alert, is that I know we've talked about a few times, oh, we should write this. And we are talking about writing stuff. Max yeah. and I have discussed it. I'd love to write the story of. Britain decides, we're not just going to stop at the Falklands. The British Expeditionary Force is coming back, and it's coming for you, Buenos Aires. (laughs) BEF-2. BEF-2 lands in Patagonia, driving on Buenos Aires to depose the junta once and for all. Um, Or launching airstrikes, you know, Ascension Island, you know, the bombers are coming in, you know, we're going to punish the Argentinians. (laughs) Thousands of sea harriers, thousands Mm -hmm. of them blotting out the sun. Sun. (laughs) Oh, yes. 
Or another thing, going back to what we discussed, you know, we didn't know about how the U.S. took over the islands very briefly to kick out these mm. these people. Is that what if they maintain them? What if the Falkland Islands are really the Franklin Islands? Franklin Islands. Um, imagine a Falklands war between the United States and Argentina. <laughs> I like said it in the year two thousand eighty-two. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like start from the 1830s. I think 1831 is when that happened. And then just for some reason, this drastically changes all of history. Mm -hmm. Everyone's Um, using dirigibles, Max. (laughs) Yes! It's a dirigible coaling station. That's right. SM SM (laughs) Sterling, eat your heart out. (laughs) Like like the Battle of the Falklands happens different because the Mm -hmm. U.S. owns it, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'd like to set it in 1982. My personal preference would be mm. because then we can have Ronnie Reagan's. <laughs> Ronald Reagan's going to teach those Argentinians a lesson. <laughs> and remember, the U.S. has a lot more carriers yes. we can launch in, and then we can launch our invasion of Argentina. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Or it bombard it like B-52s coming in, just leveling stuff. From Barksdale. The Franklin Islands will always be American soil. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, something that might be funny is, let's say... Spain holds on to the mm-hmm. Falkland Islands mm-hmm. for some reason. Yeah. You know, maybe there's no Bolivarian revolution or there is, but Spain for just some owns reason it they, for some yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then like the Spanish American war happens <laughs> and TR comes down. Goose green, TR at goose green. <laughs> Charging up Darwin Hill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's great. <laughs> Irrelevant. Why thing. would they invade the, to go all the way to the Falklands? <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of freaking nowhere. (laughs) I know we talked about the U.S. gaining Canada in the War of 1812 in an earlier episode. Mm -hmm. What if, I guess, if the U.S. won in 1812 or 1813, basically takes over Canada, Mm -hmm. I could see them forcing the British to cede all their territories in the Western Hemisphere. So it's like Jamaica, Bermuda, the Falklands. Belize. Belize. (laughs) The Bahamas. uh, Guiana becomes American territory. American Guiana. American Guiana. No Jonestown. It's like that papal bull that that set the lati- like the longitude. Yes. That's like Spain and Portugal. It's just the everything. Treaty of Tordesillas. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Everything along this latitude that belongs to Britain is now American soil. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Bermuda is now ours. Yes. Um, we need more clay. We need it all. Henry Clay. We're going to take over. That's what America's. That's what we should do if the Falkland Islands episode, they invade Argentina to punish them at the end. We absorb Argentina, <laughs> the U.S. territory of Argentina. <laughs> um, let's see other ones. Well, you were talking about early American history, and this is an interesting little tidbit about the Falkland Islands is that Spain and Britain almost went to war over the Falkland Islands in, I think, 1770. Wow. There was a dispute over it, mm-hmm. and and they almost came to blows over it. It was because of the Seven Years' War, a.k.a. the French and Indian War. Mm-hmm. You know, Britain had acquired all this new territory, and France wanted to stop its expansion. You know, the, mm-hmm. the domino theory. Britain keeps mm-hmm. taking all this stuff, and they wanted Spain to be given back the Falkland Islands. And they almost, almost fought a war over it. And how crazy would it be if there was, like, a second French and Indian War? <laughs> Seven, six years before the revolution started. Wow, that's crazy. No, yeah. really American history. You could even have like General Washington, you know, charging, you know, <laughs> marching on Montreal. <laughs> that's right. Ha, ha. <laughs> uh, yes. Well, they did. They did attack. Well, that's something we should do an American Revolution episode. Yeah. Yeah. That would be. We actually did record one a long yeah. time ago, but it wasn't that good. That was in the early days when we were still figuring this all out. Yeah, the mi- microphone quality was the was mm-hmm. the main problem. We should try that again. Yeah, I think that could be cool. Well, you know, we got that dang book for want of a nail. Oh, yeah. That thing's we have crazy. to talk about that, and that'd be a great opportunity to do it in, because mm-hmm. that's kind of a... Um, oh, and also, the great collaboration between Harry Turtledove and... Richard Dreyfus. Richard Dreyfus, yes. Yeah. The two Georges. The two Georges. I, how did that ever happen? How I is d- it? It's like you were in Jaws and I'm a sci fi writer. Do you want to write a book about Britain winning the Revolutionary War? Yeah, I do. How on earth did they meet? Did they, did Izzy part, is maybe one of them a member of each other's fan club no, or I don't something? Know. And they wrote letters. And probably met at some event or something like that, is my guess. I really I love like it. And if you look at the, the dust cover, it's hilarious because it's the <laughs> two of them sitting. It's like the guy from Red in Jaws. And our boy Harry, and then Harry Turtledove, <laughs> yeah, a guy with a giant beard. Um, Who else is Harry Turtledove going to team up with next? <laughs> He's going to write another book in the timeline one ninety one, whatever. 
and it's going to be him and Channing Tatum are going to write the, the next. <laughs> just, just like what the <laughs> insert pick whoever you know. Yeah. Him and Chris Evans are going to write Joe Steele too. This <laughs> is like what it's so bizarre. Um, oh my goodness! But but yeah. but that could be kind of fun, mm-hmm. like a a Falklands War way back then. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know the. Um, yeah, no, the Falklands, I mean, I guess we're relatively limited because of what we have. But I guess the, uh, I guess if you have Britain really angry over it or something like that, a drawn out war over it, maybe another attempt at an invasion if mm. they fail the first time. Like, they're just going <laughs> to keep going. We're just going to keep pushing this. <laughs> right, keep doing it. <laughs> uh, how about this, where uh, the Falkland Islands are called Pepys Island? Because back in the day, there was this... Peeps. Peeps. Maybe peeps. it's Peeps. I think it's Peeps. It's uh, Samuel Peeps. I thought it was Peppies. Okay. Samuel Peppies. And it's actually, I think, Peeps. Okay. British, British the, things the are British funny. diarist. Yeah. Okay. All right. Samuel, Samuel Peeps. It, it was this island that was thought to exist somewhere in the South Atlantic. And then mm-hmm. they realized, oh, wait, no, it's just the Falkland Islands. Oh, Never mind. No, just the Falklands. Maybe uh, they should have put Napoleon there. Oh, they, hey. <laughs> hey <laughs> There's now. another story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He flees to Argentina, builds a, uh, an empire in South America. Actually, the Falkland Islands are where the lost city of Atlantis was. Uh, oh, yes. That little gap in between, that's where the capital city was when it fell into the oh. ocean. Yeah, You've been watching too much of that Atlantis, the lost city movie with Michael J. Fox. Yes, and also Aquaman with... Uh, oh. Yeah, that guy. I didn't see that movie. And um, Kevin Bacon. Wait, no. Who's the guy who played the Green Goblin in the first? Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe. Kevin Bacon. What Another man with a strange face. He's got character, Max. Don't be knocking him. He's a character actor. He is a character actor. Yeah. He's mm. great in Spider-Man. I love that film. Yeah. <laughs> He's just like... <laughs> Out, am I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Um... It's a fine film. It's a fine film. He's got a grenade that turns people into skeletons. No one ever brings that up again. <laughs> that's, that's This is the real development here. That terrified me as a child. I it saw should. That, I saw that with my grandfather, and it's this wacky, goofy, silly movie. Macy Gray is singing. Goofy stuff is happening in that scene, and then men are turned into skeletons. One of them a man in a wheelchair, <laughs> this helpless old man. It's terrifying for me as a child. But then until the Hobgoblin appears. Now, that's what was really terrifying. <laughs> Spider-Man 3 is, I think... A bad movie. It's, you know, I don't It's think, too much going on. Too much going on. It's, it does, you're right. You're right. It, it really could have had a, a, a better scope. But honestly, do you think Sam Raimi was trying to be serious when he was doing the, the yeah. snappy, snappy yeah. dance around the room it's thing? In the goth yeah, clothes or whatever. No. It's but supposed to be ridiculous. It could be better than, I am the rhino! Remember from Amazing Spider-Man 2? Yeah. Paul Giamatti. What a- I'm the rhino. Oh, it's like, this is dumb. I saw the Amazing Spider-Man 2 on an airplane. Huh. And you know how at the beginning of that movie, there's that fight scene on the airplane? Yes. It's been a while since I've seen it. And like the plane crashes in it or whatever. But when I saw it, it was edited for airplanes. <laughs> so the bad guy walks out of the bathroom and he's got a gun and then the screen just slowly fades to white and then the movie, the rest of the movie starts. And the whole time I was thinking, where's Spider-Man's parents? What happened? Where are they? When are they going to show up? Not realizing that... Not to be. They were killing the Falklands, weren't they? Oh, right. There was a blowpipe missile that hit the plane. (laughs) The one time it worked. (laughs) The one time. I'm so sorry to tell you, Peter, but your parents were killed by a sea slug (laughs) missile. (laughs) The sea slug. Oh, How embarrassing. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> what other uh, ground-to-air missiles do you think they should develop? You know, sea cat, sea wolf, sea slug. Seafood. Seafood, okay. <laughs> uh, sea section. Sea dog. <laughs> um, C- CB. CB, yeah. Uh, C. Thomas Howell. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Uh, (laughs) my goodness sea cucumber to accompany the sea slug that's right sea urchin sea urchin (laughs) it's a big spiky ball (laughs) yeah a big ball of missiles that'd be that'd be really a sea mine sea mine yeah yeah sea urchin because they kind of look alike they do they do look a lot alike um Um, for i was recently watching the film for your eyes only Mm -hmm. because all those james bond films are on netflix james bond james bond (laughs) 
<laughs> Sorry, James. James. Finally, a female James Bond. Yeah. Uh, James Bond movies are on Netflix, and I watch For Your Eyes Only, which it's one of those Roger Moore, not as bad as uh, View to a Kill, mm-hmm. but, you know, or Octopussy. <laughs> um, but there's a C mine in that. Film. Yeah, what a film. Moonraker. Moonraker is Did, everyone forgets, a fine film. Yeah, everyone forgets the laser battle at the end. That's amazing. <laughs> the, the first Space Marine Corps. <laughs> <laughs> Jaws and stuff. Jaws yeah. falls in a circus. circus what a tank. terrible way to assa- to kill people, to bite them on the neck, because it's an incredibly distinctive <laughs> way to kill them. Like, you're going to walk around with a guy, like, blood all over his face. <laughs> Jugular. This, this huge chunk. It's, like, a very distinctive, like, a, someone, a, a wild animal killed this man, you know? It's like, Ripped his throat out. It's like Clarence Boddicker at the end of RoboCop. It's just, ah, <laughs> after the spike yeah, yeah. has gone in. Sayonara, RoboCop. Here, here. You let me use my information spike to kill you. <laughs> I'll use my USB because that's how he gets the yeah. He like downloads video information with his big yeah big bist spike. spike. But no one else uses big spikes to transfer information. Now that would have been funny if everyone else are like, oh, let's start the presentation. And they pull out like a big spike and then put it into the thing and turn it. <laughs> and There's- also, could they thought of a, a villain who didn't look like? A high school math teacher. I mean, that's what he looks like. <laughs> uh, Kurtwood Smith. That's a good movie. He's good in that. Yeah. Yeah. Dick, you're fired. <laughs> you're fired? <laughs> and then he falls out and his arms are really long. He becomes claymation. <laughs> it's like the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <It's just laughs> uh, almost as good as the bad guy in the second one, the brain and the big robot. Yeah. And he's like he's holding the... The his name's Kane. Kane's please. nuke, or that's what it's called, right? Nuke yeah, the drug, yeah. and the robot's like, eh, eh. it's like trying yeah, to grab it with yeah. his little claw, and he's like, no, no. <laughs> well, that's a fine film. But Robocop three, not so fine. Not so fine. Not so fine at all. I've n- I I can't watch it. I've never finished. I can't get through it. Yeah, it's not good. But let's let's get back on topic, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, Octopussy. So <laughs> George McDonald Frazier wrote the screenplay. To Octopussy. And he also wrote the Flashman books. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I just wanted to say that. Oct- no Octopussy. <laughs> One of the more boring ones. It, yeah. It's funny to say a movie where a man gets killed by a mechanical alligator is boring, but it kind of <laughs> is. <laughs> what a weird movie. I watched that movie at a sleepover when I was like... A, nine years old they had like a james bond sleepover let's watch a bunch of james bond movies <laughs> movie number one octopussy <laughs> just, huh. uh, uh, it's an interesting i don't know if i would have gone with that one first and and then moon ranker was also that same night i guess he was a big uh roger moore fan yeah. i guess i definitely remember the hover gondola and just think huh <laughs> yeah take a big step for mankind drax <laughs> Oh, jeez. I like how in that scene, one guy, it's implied he gets thrown into the sun. He's like, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> like that's a really long way, you know? Yeah. It takes eight minutes for light to get from the sun to earth. <laughs> but a great film. Oh, my goodness. Oh. How does this have to do with the Falkland Wars? It doesn't. N- everything and nothing. Uh, well, it is Britain. He's British. You know, yeah, they should have a James Bond where that was part of it. He's <laughs> got to go to the Falkland Islands. Islands. You I'm go sorry, the... James, but you're not a citizen. You were born before 1983 <laughs> when they were made citizens. <laughs> <laughs> you have to kill all these people to get your citizens. <laughs> <laughs> It goes back to to Bond Manor, and it's just like this crappy shack with like a a sheep shearing shed in the back. (laughs) Ah, home. (laughs) Uh, The Falklands. Well, the British still like. I think they still keep a military presence there. It's not like they. I mean, because they really are concerned. I guess that the. Argent. I don't think Argentina is in much danger of doing this. I well, you know, you never really know. It would be so stupid to do. I mean, this whole war is the stupidest thing yeah. ever. A diplomatic solution could totally have happened, but it mm-hmm. just didn't. But um, uh, that was one thing in the Max Hastings book that I was reading is mm-hmm. that Britain has spent billions and billions of pounds defending the Falkland Islands. 
I mean, billions of pounds, billions of pounds. Yeah, probably heavier than the Falkland Islands are. <laughs> um, but like, to uh, it. Yeah. well, like to station soldiers, that's not mm-hmm. cheap, and sending warships all yeah, the way. Yeah, because it's the... not like they're just jetting across the English Channel. <laughs> I got to send them all the way to the South Atlantic, close to Antarctica. <laughs> Running patrols, uh, paying for infrastructure to justify all this stuff you're doing, it costs a lot of money. Mm hmm. How would one get to the Falkland Islands? That's a great question. Because I don't think you could probably fly to Buenos Aires would make the most sense, but they probably don't fly from there. Maybe they uh, they fly from uh, Chile or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Is there even a landing strip there? Oh, there's landing strips there, yeah. Well, were they just military, though? Is there a civilian? <laughs> the Falklands <laughs> Airport. There's definitely airstrips on the island. I mean, it's, it's actually kind of bigger than you'd think. Mm-hmm. Even though it's not as big as it looks on a world map. Mm-hmm. It looks massive. <laughs> it looks huge. Um, but you know what? Now that you mention it, what if Argentina tried to take the Falklands today? Could Britain stop them right now? They do have an aircraft carrier. They have a, a proper aircraft carrier. It's mm-hmm. got a ramp at the end, but it's still a pretty big one. It's not yeah. just like a jump jet. Yeah, for helicopters. For, yeah, it's not yeah. just one of those. I think they could stop them. I don't think Argentina has any interest in doing that at this point, frankly. Once again, the diplomatic solution is like a way better idea. Yeah. But the thing is, is the people in the Falklands don't want to become part of Argentina. That's They're not like irredentists. Like, we need to be returned to Argentina. Like, they're all British. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sort of like the people in, in Gibraltar. I think a lot of them didn't want to go back. It's like, well, we're Britons. We don't want to go be part of another. I mean, it's a, it's a, di- it's a, it's, it's a difficult question, kind of, because, of course... If you hold a referendum, they're going to stay, they're going to want to stay in Britain. I mean, they did run a referendum recently and it was like a 99.999% stay in Britain vote. But I mean, if the argument is that, oh, the only reason they're there in the first place is because they were stolen from us, then the popular thing doesn't matter. Like, yeah. I don't know. I can yeah. see both sides, but I kind of... Yeah, but it's not like all those people are going to relocate. I don't know. It just, I think it's one of those things that they're just not going to resolve it and whatever. Yeah. And Yeah. And like, okay, they have a proper aircraft carrier, but do they have a large enough special forces? And like, I don't know. Military is not huge, but enough to retake the islands, I guess. But I think they're on guard now. It's not like they're going to be taken without a fight. Like they would detect it. And Argentina's had a lot of economic issues in recent years. And it's just not. I mean, they put the Falkland Islands on their money, which automatic, you know, put something worthless on. I'm joking. (laughs) (laughs) Never mind. (laughs) I mean, I don't know. (laughs) I don't want to make Argentinian people angry. Yeah. I'm not it's gonna... just one of those things that's not going to... It's so interesting. What a footnote of the 80s. Yeah, in the 80s, for goodness sakes. It's so weird that you have this war. It, I'm not going to say the height of the Cold War, but it's a time in which tensions were somewhat high with you know Afghanistan happening and whatnot. Well, Rambo yeah. 3 hadn't happened yet, so... <laughs> right. <laughs> but um, it's so weird that you have this war that has almost nothing to do with the Cold War. Like, mm-hmm. almost nothing. Yeah, it's weird that there, there's not even, like, a, Argentina was a Marxist government or whatever. Well, there is a slight bit, is that the, the whole reason the country was owned by the Junta was because things were destabilized by, like, the dirty war. The government was hunting down all these leftist rebels and stuff and extrajudicial killings and whatnot. So, I mean, I guess it's kind of related to communism and whatnot, but, like, not really all that much. It is an interesting footnote because it really does seem to fall outside mainly of those parameters. I mean, shoot, when was the last time there was a war where both sides used the same arms, you know? Yeah, they used the same type of rifle. They Both of them used blowpipes. Yeah. I mean, it's slightly different. Like, the what is it, the LRA1? Well, yeah, the British version of the FN Fowl, which is a little bit different, but it's not that much. The British French. That's a big rifle that everyone forgets about. Every army used that or the G3 for a long time, <laughs> it seems like. Yeah. Not the good old M14. Not the good M16. Well, but the, uh, the the Argentinians used the M14. No, I thought they used the uh, FN Fowl too. Oh, they did. But I mean like special forces and whatnot. Interesting. And the uh, British used M16s and stuff in the special boat service. Special boat service. Yes, the SBS. The SBS. Everyone for, every, everybody talks about the SAS and how great they are. Mm-hmm. Damn it. What about the special boat service? They're pretty great too, you know. They are great. It's like every Call of Duty and stuff. Oh, SAS this and SAS that. Don't want to make any SAS people angry, but I mean, Mm -hmm. boats. (laughs) They're there too, guys. Don't forget about them. Special Bodie McBoat service. Bodie McBoat face service. 
<laughs> um, yeah, no, it's interesting. It's a fascinating mm. thing from the eighties, and, and it is. But it is a, in some ways maybe the last colonial war. Yeah, I mean, I can't. Well, let me try to think. Uh, France has done stuff in Africa to fight against rebels in certain countries, like in Mali, and mm-hmm. they actually have a history of doing it quite regularly. Something that doesn't get reported very much, at least in the United States, they have regularly intervened in various countries, mainly with the French Foreign Legion, yeah. in various Mali and Chad and the Central African Republic. Excuse me, the Central African Empire. <laughs> <laughs> How could Emperor I Jean Bokassa? On his golden throne. Yeah. Literally bankrupt your country to have a coronation. Oof. But yeah, no, I mean, but not in the way of like this, like reclaiming territory. They're right. protecting. They have like French, They're France has hegemony. These, well, know, they have these like influence. special relationship with these countries that used to be French colonies, which they owned a lot of Western Africa. Mm-hmm. They would send, they send these troops every once in a while to help stabilize them. I mean, the British sent troops to Sierra Leone in 99, I think. Really? Yeah. Fought against the RUF, the Revolutionary United Front. Imagine if there was a war over Hong Kong. Just China. <laughs> well, just... the China would just, well, there almost was. Didn't you ever see Tomorrow Never Dies? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Right. <laughs> that came out the same year Hong Kong transferred from Britain to China. Maybe that was a subliminal concern of theirs. Uh, sure. I mean, that one, that movie's funny because it's like a war between Britain and China. It's like, uh, we know who's going to win that one. Right. And doing it. To sell newspapers. Yes. That's, that's what it's all about. No, that's right. <laughs> ha, ha, stealth boats. Stealth boats. <laughs> it's like those Zimmer mint boats or whatever they're called. You know, those weird looking American ships. Oh. Those littoral combat ships or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stealth boat. Stealth boat. What a weird movie. Yeah. You got to remember the lesson of journalism, Elliot. Give the people what you want. And then he drives a giant sea drill into him. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Screw you, Benny. <laughs> like in oh, Total yeah. Recall. <laughs> That's a good film. It is a good film. Just like Robocop. Same director. Yeah, that's right. Paul Verhoeven. Yep, yep. Proud Dutch. Um, Dutch man. Yeah. Dutch man. He actually based... One of the characters from his film on Zeiss Inkart. I'm trying to remember who Archer it was. Zeiss Inkart. He was the Nazi commissioner for the Netherlands. Mm-hmm. He was tried at the at Nuremberg and convicted and executed. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, that was Michael Irons, right? <laughs> uh, the... See you at the party, Richter. <laughs> See you at the party, Richter. <laughs> <laughs> Let me throw your arms. <laughs> I can't remember who it was. I, it might have been Cohagen. Yeah, Cohagen or whatever, yeah. yeah. Cohagen, give the people air. Give these people air. And I like how he activates it by putting his hand. He just separates out the fingers a little bit. He does like a the like Star, the Trek, Star Trek, Trek thing. Yeah. Oh, got it. That's how it works, huh? Mm-hmm. <sighs> what a strange movie. Yeah, I like it, though. It's fantastic. No, of course. It's great. It's very entertaining. Mm-hmm. That is set... There's like something about a war between like a, the northern and southern hemispheres in that. There's like it talks about like the northern block or whatever. The, that was actually, I don't know. I, I guess I do kind of remember that a little bit on the news at the beginning of the film. Yeah. Argentina makes me think of Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires makes me think of another Paul Verhoeven movie. Mm-hmm. And what may that be, Max? I think you might be thinking of Starship Troopers. I know. How the beginning part of that movie is set in Buenos Aires. <laughs> Apparently. Everyone speaks English. <laughs> yeah, everyone speaks English. The Latin paradise. And then it gets blown up by the meteor. And yeah. then some kid is like squashing on bugs. And some guy's like, the only good bug is a dead bug. I'm doing my we're, part. We're about to execute this criminal. who This cri- this murderer was found guilty today in court. His execution's at 9 p.m. tonight. <laughs> it's going to be streamed on live television. <laughs> <laughs> Must see TV. <laughs> that, that's a good movie. The guy who plays, who does the voice of Mr. Krabs is in that movie. Didn't Ceausescu get killed on television? He did, yeah. There's actually a video of it on YouTube, I think. Oh, Ceausescu. Oh, Ceausescu. Spending too much money on public works buildings. Yeah, that's right. The Palace of the People, palace which it wasn't people. really... <laughs> Not really a palace. Well, it was a palace, but it wasn't but, really for the people. But it wasn't of the people, yes. Coming back to alternate history ideas... Just Argentina in the middle of other unrelated conflicts, just deciding to step in and take Las Malvinas. <laughs> like, um, maybe like it's 1940, the BEF has just been 
taken out of Dunkirk. Dunkirk yeah. <laughs> it's like, this is the perfect time. I'm joining the Axis. <laughs> <laughs> the South American theater. Have like Brazil be allied and Argentina be Axis. And oh my goodness. Venezuela join the Axis. And... <laughs> I know Brazil did join the war. There was a Brazilian expeditionary force that fought in Italy. Yeah, yeah. And they, it was actually really, it's very, it was very important was it was an air base for a lot of anti-submarine. There was like American air squadrons based out of Brazil that launched anti-submarine stuff. The symbol for the expeditionary force was a snake smoking a pipe, if I remember correctly. Hmm. I, I think because there was some person that said a snake will smoke a pipe before Brazil joins this war. Or something. I don't remember precisely the explanation, <laughs> but it's a nice image. I like it. Nice. <laughs> yeah, no, um, Argentina jumping in. The Korean War on the side of North Korea. <laughs> We're going to take them out, Venus. You know, uh, the Gulf War, Argentina and Britain fought together on the same side. Did they? Yeah, they were part of the coalition. <laughs> what did they add? Uh, economic support. I don't know. <laughs> Probably, that, there might have been soldiers. Mm -hmm. I don't know. They join Iraq. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like the the drive out of Kuwait and suddenly Argentina defects. It just attacks the British. Yeah, yeah, that's right. War between Britain. Britain has to fight a two-front war. <laughs> They're distracted because some of their ships are in the Persian Gulf, so they have to go all the way around. Oh, no. Yeah, I, don't, I think that one's going to end the same way. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe another alternate scenario could be... Britain decides on the diplomatic solution, mm -hmm. so they agree with Argentina to hand over the island, mm -hmm. but the Falkland Islanders are like, no way, you can't do this. We're going to declare independence. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then get invaded by Argentina. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like Rhodesia did back in uh, 1965, I think yeah. it was. And then Iraq is the only one who, who recognizes <laughs> And the Falkland Islands joins the war against Britain. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> we're launching an attack on Ascension Island. We're sending this. We're sending this dinghy with some guys with shotguns. We've got these Scud missiles that <laughs> Saddam has sent us. <laughs> oh goodness! Uh, I think we've about exhausted what we can out of the Falklands. But an interesting thing to think about. And hopefully we're showing that you can make alternate history out of anything. But no, it's interesting. It is interesting to think about because if Britain loses the Falkland Wars, which is Falkland War, which is the most, you know, realistic situation, then it probably see the fall of Thatcher's government in, you yeah, know, perhaps. Yeah. Or a severe weakening of it. Maybe Britain yeah, is definitely. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty big blow to put together this task force and send it out there. I mean, that's a pretty ballsy move. But the funny thing is the Argentinians know it's coming. Because it's like all over the news. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, that was a big problem was that the media was just kind of like, here comes the invasion fleet. <laughs> here it comes. Uh, for instance, uh, we were talking about things Argentina could have improved upon. Argentinian planes, when they were attacking British ships, a lot of times they drop their bombs really low to the ground and at really high speeds. And the bombs were made such a way that they were supposed to arm after a certain amount of time after being released. They were hit so close that they would just go through the ship, like one in and out the other, <laughs> oh or, or like lodging themselves inside of it. Oh, my goodness. But reporters talked about that and revealed what the problem was almost immediately after it happened. And it's just like, oh, no, what are you doing? Stop yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Loose lips sink ships. Literally. Literally. <laughs> yeah. Literally does. Luckily for the British, though, the uh, Argentinians had bought that from the United States, these bombs, mm -hmm. and the United States either hadn't given them the manuals for them or <laughs> oh they, they had lost their copy. But apparently these manuals told them how to set the fuses to detonate upon impact. Right, yeah. And they just never figured it out during the war. Right. That could have been crippling. That's true. Absolutely. Like so many near misses throughout that entire mm -hmm. war. There was really only one big British defeat at Fitzroy. That was like another attempted amphibious operation that... Like a ship sank and a bunch of people got burned and, and killed. It very well could have been like that at San Carlos and at sea. I mean, they were very, very, very lucky. The British also had boffers guns, which is important. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Key to success in any battle. Who needs a sea slug when you have <laughs> twin linked <laughs> Twin linked boffers. Boffers, boom, yeah. Boom, 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 boom. British also had 
Bren gun still. Yeah. In this they, yeah, the Bren gun, the modernized version of it lasts until the eighties or nineties, yeah. Mm-hmm. They some places still make Bren guns. Really? Yeah. Where? In India, I think. Uh, not like the classic Bren gun. It's got a different it's got a straighter magazine and uses a seven six two NATO round. Does it still come out the top though? Yeah. Ah, uh, that's interesting. That's an interesting thing mm-hmm. that it also kind of blocks the sight of the guy shooting it a little bit. There's, a, I know there's a sight on the side. The of it. ring off to the side. Yeah, but yeah. still, it's a little. <laughs> it it does seem strange, doesn't it? Yeah. But hey, the Japanese did it too. So yeah, and the Czechs. And the Czechs. that's where the gun, the Bren gun, is inspiration comes from a Czech machine gun, mm-hmm. and the Madsen machine gun, which is a Danish machine gun used in World War One. Really? Mm-hmm. Huh. It looks very much like it, except that the Madsen doesn't have the pistol grip on it. This is also the first, I think, the one of the first wars where there was a lot of night vision used. Both sides had night vision. <sighs> oh, how could I forget this? The British actually had tanks in the Falkland Islands. Did they? Yes. Nice. Scorpions and scimitars. Nice. Well, those are not exactly a tank. <laughs> Tankettes, you might Tankettes, call them. <laughs> yes, sure. Yeah. Very, very small. Yeah. I remember reading Max Hastings' book, and they said, a formidable 76-millimeter gun. Is that formidable, really, though? Well, if the other side doesn't have any tanks, then yeah. Yeah, I guess so. But, you know, maybe not something to face down a T-72 with. <laughs> Did you know, Let me but, plink at it with this little... Pew. Believe it or not, I think um, I think one of these tanks actually shot down a Skyhawk, an Argentinian Skyhawk. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's like something you see in video games, not in yeah, real life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They should do a Call of Duty Falklands War. <laughs> you spend most of the time exercising on your ship. So you're trying to get, get there because it's a really long trip. There's a, a tea brewing mini game. Yeah, yeah. You get your um, hexamine cooker. There's, there's a great Onion parody clip. Call of Duty Modern Warfare, the expanded edition that's really modern. And it's just like you're at Ramstein Air Force Base fixing trucks for nine hours a day. And then you're walking and then it's like people arguing over like stupid stuff, you know. And then like, oh, you're walking by like you're just patrolling around and then you get shot by a sniper. That's it. You know, <laughs> the game's over. Yeah. <laughs> Modern Warfare. There was a really famous raid on this place called Pebble Island by the SAS. They, like, blew up a bunch of Argentine uh, airplanes and whatnot. Oh, wow. Yeah. Go to the so, SAS. The SAS. Originally from a unit known as the Artist's Rifles. What? Mm-hmm. Well, why? Why? That's, it's, a, it's a county of London, I guess, or city of London infantry unit. It dates back to World War I, but I guess they got formed into this. I don't know. Hmm. A lot of countries have SASs. Mm-hmm. Australia. Australia and New Zealand do, for sure. Rhodesia had an SAS. Yeah, they did, yeah. Yeah. Did Canada have it? They have some sort of special forces. Oh, yeah, of course they do. I mean, every big country does. Yeah. The Bermudan SAS. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the Somalian SAS. Ascension SAS. <laughs> Aiden Protectorate SAS. <laughs> the SAS was in the Aiden Protectorate in Oman. Ah, there's a TV show about it. Um, uh, on Amazon Prime or something. Is there? Hmm. Yeah, it's like set in the 60s, hmm. the Interesting. 50s. I don't know. That makes sense. Well, either way, I think we've about exhausted the Falklands War as a topic. Yeah. But this has been fun. It's an interesting thing to talk about. Just to clarify, I mean, I know we kind of joke around a little bit, but we have the utmost respect for everyone that was involved in this war. Yeah. yeah. You know, like we're not we're not making fun of any of the people that had to go through this horribly stupid conflict that was perpetrated by people with no sense. It's, it's yeah. the dumbest thing to fight over. Mm-hmm. So want to make that clear, mm-hmm. not kidding about that. Yes, absolutely. Because <laughs> unlike most of the things we talk about on this show, potentially there's people who could be listening, who were actually involved vet- in Yeah, it. who are actually veterans of it. Yeah. You know, um, but no, I, it's a, it's an interesting thing to talk about, but this yeah. is the most, one of the most recent, yeah, we talked about the Gulf war, but that and the Gulf war about the most recent things we've talked about. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. People around. And I mean, the Gulf war was very, very short. This was actually, what was it? Three months, something like that. Something, oh, but most a, of it was a buildup. I don't think the actual action took too long once they were at the islands. Yeah. 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 It was pretty quick. I think it was maybe three weeks after they landed was the end of the war. I mean, goose green's the only real battle of the mm-hmm. whole thing. Uh, <laughs> the taking of South Georgia Island. <laughs> that was another thing. Was it 301, 304 commando or something like I that? Uh, I wouldn't know, yeah. One casualty 
it was just because they thought the guy was going to scuttle one of the submarines that was parked there and they shot him but that was the only person that died mm. in the whole operation oh, wow. a lot of a lot of british servicemen died in helicopter crashes during this whole thing mm. the pebble island raid a lot of the people who perpetrated that died in a helicopter crash like a week later wow helicopters are really dangerous yeah they do crash a lot i would never get on a helicopter i've never been on one i don't want to be on one not interested Hmm. yeah you're more about parasailing parasailing yes very safe very very safe (laughs) glider i travel by glider (laughs) We were talking about Canada earlier. There was a very famous incident where there was a Canadian airliner that lost power in both engines. And the pilot was a glider enthusiast and used this method gliders use where they turn so they fly sideways to slow the plane down to make an emergency landing. I'll I'll show you like a a clip. I'm sure the people inside really appreciate it. (laughs) But if it saved their lives, and yeah. Yeah, like they, they were fine, yeah. There was an episode of Air Crash Investigations about it. I love that show. It's an amazing show. Never seen it. I got to show you some. Okay. It's, it's not good. bad. Um, but cool. The Falkland Islands. Super interesting. Mm-hmm. I've enjoyed talking about it. Yeah, me too. Well, this is Matt signing off. And this is Max signing off. Have a good day, guys.